Okay, everyone, we're going to hold on for just a minute or two longer so people can log on and we'll be right back with you. Hello everyone, thank you for joining our first digital safety con. Today we are focusing on construction and heat stress. So we have six of our best vendors lined up today to talk about what products they offer that can help people in the construction industry and trades. Today we have Ergodyne who will be talking about heat stress and tool tethering. Cordova and their high-vis traffic clothing, Honeywell and their leading edge technology, Acme who will cover first aid, MSA will talk about what's new in head protection, and PIP will touch on hand protection and a little eye protection as well. So thank you again for joining us and, and make sure you ask questions throughout the questionnaire option of the webinar. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi all, my name is Allie and I'm gonna very briefly give you an over, overview of Ergodyne's heat stress and objects at heights line of products and support. First, we will start with heat stress. Two terms you'll often hear in reference to working in hot weather is heat stress and heat related injuries. So first we should explain what each of those mean. Heat stress is a term used to describe your body losing the ability to control internal temperature. Sweating is the typical method of how we cool ourselves down, but as temperatures or levels of exertions rise, our bodies lose the ability to keep up. The second term is heat related illness. This is an umbrella term to encompass the four major illnesses that are caused by heat. Heat rash, heat cramps, heat exhaustion, and heat stroke. Why is any of this important? Well, because in 2018, there were 49 occupational heat-related fatalities, a fairly large increase from 37 in 2017. Additionally, there have been over 11,000 injuries related to exposure to environmental heat. This is very much an issue on job sites. And the beauty of it is, heat-related illnesses and fatalities are 100% preventable. And here's how. First is hydration. Water is an integral part of our bodies and it helps many cellular processes operate. Over 75% of people who suffer from heat related illnesses are dehydrated. The easiest way to determine hydration levels is by color of urine. The image on the right is a sticker and magnet that we provide for restrooms to keep hydration top of mind. To help combat hydration and make access to water easier, we offer a full line of hydration products ranging from hydration backpacks that hold up to three liters of water, as well as personal water bottles, both plastic and stainless steel options. The next way to combat heat stress is via rest and shade. 
Workers should always be allowed to take breaks as needed when working in hot conditions, and it's important for job sites to provide shaded areas so that they can get some relief from the sun. A good way to do this is via tents and portable shelters. Ergonine has a variety of shelter options available. We have standard 10 by 10 foot canopies, a 10 by 20 foot option, and a smaller umbrella option that's perfect for flaggers and individual workers. Uh, we have accessories that come with these as well, ranging from side panels and weight bags to an umbrella stake, stand, and trailer hitch mount. The next method to combat heat is via cooling PPE. These are options that are designed to be used on areas of the body where large collections of blood vessels, such as the neck, wrist, and arms, exist. These work to wick sweat away from the skin while also reducing exposure to the sun. At Ergodyne, we have a very wide variety of options available, starting with our head and neck series. These evaporative and absorptive options work to wick moisture off the skin and provide cooling to the body to help regulate internal temperature. We have cooling towels, headbands, hats, and multibands within this series. Within our vest and arm series, the focus is on core cooling. These options work to cool the large surface areas of your back and chest, while our arm sleeves are perfect for providing UPF 50 plus protection and cooling to the arms. A lot of these options are phase change, uh, which results in putting phase change material into a bucket of ice water, refrigerator or cooler, and they last two to four hours. And then we also have evaporative options that use water uh, to create the cooling effect. Our final PPE series focuses on items that are made to integrate with hard hats. These cooling bandanas, hard hat pads, and neck shades are perfect additions to any hard hat. We also have FR accessories available in all three of these topics as well. The final topic within this category is sun protection. Skin cancer is a major concern for outdoor workers. And in 2018, over 3 million Americans were diagnosed with skin cancer. 90% of which was caused by sun exposure. This is an $8 billion issue. This year, Ergodyne launched our crude line of SPF 50 plus sun protection, formulated with workers in mind. It's water and sweat resistant, scent free and fast absorbing. We have sprays, sticks and multiple size bottles of lotion to choose from. This final image shows a variety of options and how, the inter how they interface with a worker. This image is printed on leave behind cards that can be used to showcase options to customers. Here you'll see eyewear, cooling skull caps, our sunscreen, and then we also have job site coolers available as well. Next, we move into objects at heights, which is one of the fastest growing safety categories in the country. When we think of safety at heights as a whole, the safety world is well versed in worker safety which includes fall protection, other PPE, and access solutions. These are often at the forefront. The other half of this diagram is where we focus on the objects that a worker needs to take to heights in order to do their job. Tools, equipment, water, cell phones, etc., and the solutions needed to prevent them from falling. Injuries and fatalities resulting from dropped objects are on the rise. In 2018 alone, there were over 52,000 injuries and 278 fatalities. In dollars, this equates to over $403 million. And just like heat stress, it's preventable. At Ergodyne, we follow the three T's to do this, trapped, tethered, and topped. Trapping refers to the action of creating a connection point on tools. As you think of many tools, they often don't have captive holes in which a lanyard can simply be attached. So these products create retrofit attachment points for a lanyard to attach and keep them safe. We have a wide variety of options available to do this. Depending on the geometry and weight of the tool, we have one-step attachments like wires, shackles, slips, and our power tool and tape measure traps, as well as more universal two-step options like tape and tails that can work on almost any tool. The next T refers to tethered. These are the lanyards. This is creating retention between the tool and the anchor point. There are a lot of different lanyards and options to consider. The first category of lanyards we have is our standard equipment tool series. Within this, we have our shock absorbing FX lanyards that reduce the amount of force a dropped object will produce. We also have heavy duty lanyards that are built to secure 40 and 80 pound tools or equipment. Retractables are another very popular lanyard option. 
We have heavy duty retractables that have five and eight pound weight ratings, as well as low profile options for your smaller hand tools. All of these are built with a worker in mind and can easily interface with harnesses, vests, pouches, and tool belts. Beyond that, we also have several different specialty lanyards for items like hard hats, cell phones, and wrist lanyards that help keep tools close and minimize the overall footprint of your tethering solution. Since we know that determining the proper solutions for each tool can be a confusing process, we have put together kits that are meant to help take the guesswork out of it. We have full trades kits that are built to tether all of the tools typically needed for a particular trade, like carpenters, glazers, iron and steel workers, and then we have individual tool kits that provide you with the trap and tether needed for a particular item or tool. These are very popular and make implementing a tethering program a bit simpler. The final T is topped. This refers to having secure closures on containers used to hold tools and equipment to ensure that if a bag or pouch tips over, all of its contents do not rain down on the people below. Our topped products include a variety of buckets, bags, pouches, and tool belts, all designed around the needs of a worker at heights. All of our belts and pouches are modular, which means you can plug and play different pouches and holsters to create your own tool rig. As I'm sure most of you are aware, there's an ANSI standard surrounding these products, and there are definitely imitators out there. So how do you know if a lanyard is legit? Well, there are five must-haves. First, it must have a captive eye, which ensures that the webbing will not fall off the carabiner or become disconnected. It also must have a locking gate. This can be either manual or automatic. It must be clearly marked with weight ratings, manufacturer information, warnings, and lanyard length. It must come with product instructions. And finally, it must have a certificate of conformity which details when and where it was tested to the ANSI standard. If a lanyard does not have these items, be very cautious as they may not provide the protection that they claim. In closing, we at Ergodyne have a plethora of information related to dropped object prevention, including an entire web page dedicated to it filled with video resources and endless information. Please feel free to check it out or reach out to any one of us for more information. Thank you very much for listening. Hi, my name is Katrina Schifani and I am the Director of Industrial Sales for the Midwest Region for Cordova Safety Products. I appreciate your time today. I'm gonna to show you some items that can be added to your line in the construction industry for Connie Safety. First, you've always have referred to vests as either a um, class one or class or non-rated, class two or class three. These standards were changed, as you know, to off-road, which would equal class one, to the R for roadway or P for public safety. I'm finding that most people still refer to all the garments as class two or class three, and that's what we'll refer to today. First, I'm going to start off with monocrylic vests. Monocrylic vests are becoming um, more of a basic item that you're having to use in a lot of the construction sites just because of the different jobs that they're performing. So keep in mind that we do offer the monocrylic vest and we offer these in a class two and class three version. They both are available with the hook and loop or they're available with the zipper. You do have a D ring in the back and it also offers three different pockets. The one thing about monocrylic vest, it will say that it's fire resistant in the tag itself, which is very important to get on site at some plants. And if you do set this on fire, if you ever do an open flame, you'll find that the vest itself will not burn. It just sort of has a little light brown color and it's still very soft to the hand. There was a lot of confusion because self-extinguishing vests used to say that they were fire resistant. Now, um, that has changed where the tag itself will now tell you that it is not a fire resistant vest. So in the event you have to have that on site, a self-extinguishing vest will not work for you. A lot of people will put this over FR closing, or there's a possibility they might need near a flame, so they'll use self-extinguishing in a lot of applications. This one, if you do light it, it will put itself out, but it can flame up, but it will put itself out. It's available in orange and lime. We have the traditional class two version, which you see on the screen, and you also have the availability of a breakaway vest, which you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen in the lime color. One thing that's really nice, too, are the expandable vests. Um, this right here is a two-tone expandable. We offer these in lime and orange. And you'll see that the, on the right-hand side, you can see where there's Velcro that you could pull back. The nice thing is you only have to stock two sizes for the, um, 
for your job site, and that's small through XL or 2X through 5X. If you're in an area of the type of season where in the morning you've got to wear a sweatshirt or a coat to work, and then later you go to a sweatshirt or you take the jacket off altogether, you can cinch the vest up to fit you for that job for the rest of the day. You don't have to worry about having a vest that's too tight when you got the coat on and too big when you had the coat off. And it really is a nice thing to have for as far as inventory is concerned. You only have to stock two different items. This right here, if you want pockets, we have the vest for you. It's available in orange and lime. The nice thing about this one is that you will see it has a D-ring. It's got the mic tabs. You will also notice that you've got a place for it to attach lanyards in the very front of the vest. The two pockets on the bottom front are large enough they could even hold a mini iPad, just to give you an idea of the size. On the inside of the vest, you have those same two size pockets on the inside bottom. On the front, you also have two chest pockets and one has a clear ID badge. And then also on the inside left-hand side, you have another cell phone pocket that has a closure on there. Also, if you look in the back of the line vest, you'll see a picture. You can see the snap on the side. This has a pocket that goes from the very top line, or excuse me, stripe, all the way down. You can put, this is a great storage place for putting an iPad. You have to use so much more of these now. Um, in all the job applications. And the nice thing about having the iPad in the back of you, it's not weighing one side of your vest down. And on top of the fact, you're not having to worry about banging it in the front. Normally, you're not going to be walking backwards into things. So it offers a little bit more protection. And you can also put your extra gloves back there. You can put a flashlight back there. You can put the plans that you might have for the site back there. We did go with the snap as opposed to the zipper, which makes it easier for you to access whatever you decide to store in that back pocket. Um, we do offer five-point breakaway vests. You'll notice we offer these in the class two and the class three. We're finding more on bids and job requirements that so people have to wear a class three vest that is breakaway. Um, so this is something that's available to you, and you'll notice that you have the ID badge available to you on that style also. Class three options, we have this with the reflective tape, and we also have it with the two-tone reflective tape. Um, you will see they've got the mic tabs on this. It really does make a difference, especially if your workers are working at night, especially on the road. If someone is wearing a class three vest, just their arm movements will catch the light as it hits the vest and it brings attention to you immediately that someone's there as opposed to thinking there's just another barrel or something out there. It brings a lot more attention and it will make the driver realize oh, that's a real person. So it's something to consider, especially if you have people working on the roadway environment. Just to let you know, we do carry a full range of vests. This is just a very small offering of what we have available to you. So you just need to get with your county safety person, salesperson or customer service to let them know the amount of pockets you need, if you'd rather have reflective tape or if you want the two-tone tape or if you'd like no tape at all. We do offer vests in colors that are non-rated. It does have a little bit of tape on it. You've got this center one in the orange. It's got this non-rated or a class one. I had also tape that can be on these. I have a vest with an X on the back. So just get with your representative to let them know what you're looking for and I'm sure they'll find you the perfect vest. Another thing, you have a couple of options. We have the pants and it does have Velcro at the very bottom that goes up the leg. So it enables the wearer to put their boot in there. So they won't get the inside of their pants as dirty because you do have space. But something that's growing in popularity just because of the ease are the leg gaiters, and you got it with the reflective tape or the two-tone in both color options. But the nice thing about this, it Velcros in three places, it holds on um, very easy. It's very easy to carry and pack. Um, you do have these available in the lime and the orange, and they also make a class E rating. When you get into the neck shades, I've got the traditional neck shade that's on the gentleman in the orange hat. A hard hat, and that one is available to fit on a cap style or a full brim. We've added the new one on the right-hand side. It only fits on the full brim. It gives you additional coverage around the outside edge of the full brim hard hat, and then it gives you the drop in the back. The nice thing about this one, though, it folds up by twisting it, and it fits into a little bag that's about the size of your hand, and that bag stays attached to the back of the, um, the product itself. And so on there, you're able to store it. And then you also have a slide on the very front and the back that your hard hat brim slides into. So this way, if you hit wind or something, it won't fly up. I do realize that some people have them where they don't have a way to have it attached to the hat. 
And this is just an added feature that will make it more convenient and easier for the wearer. T-shirts, extremely popular, very important in the industry. We have a sleeveless that's a class two. I've got traditional um, short sleeves and I've got the long sleeves. I have these without tape, I have them with tape. I also have the traditional class two, class three that too had the black bottom front to help hide some of the dirt. So whatever your needs are with the t-shirt, we can take care of that also. We even offer another line that's not the traditional mesh, that's a little bit lighter weight fabric. So if you're in a very hot environment or your employees are upset that it's too hot for them to work, because of the garments they have on, we've got you covered. We have another line of t-shirts that you could also see and feel the difference in the fabric and evaluate for your um, job. And then we also have the traditional sweatshirts. Um, one thing we've added on the sweatshirt and the zip up hooded um, shirt is the fact that on the left chest, we have a zipper that you can slide um, a cell phone in. So that's extra protection for the wearer's cell phone because normally everyone's gonna have that with them on site. And then you do have the nice big pocket in the front with the black, which will also help hide the dirt. This is available in the orange color also. This is the higher end fabric that's available. So it's a heavyweight fleece in addition to the fact that it offers less pilling than most of the jackets in the market. We have the, um, a two-in-one and a three-in-one bomber jacket. And you can see there's a little bit difference in the two jackets themselves. The three-in-one does offer the black bottom front and also with the cuffs. And we will be adding to this line for the winter. We'll be adding pants. We'll be adding a windbreaker and also a parka. One thing I'll let you know, company pride by having your name logoed on garments. This right here is just an example of having your company name on the front pocket and also the center back. It does um, advertise for you when you're on site or when they go to lunch or they go home and stop by the store. So keep that in mind. It builds company pride and also brand awareness. We do the logos for all the vests, the jackets, the um, t-shirts, all that is done in-house. We also do gloves and we also do glasses. Our hired hats, we also do by our domestic manufacturer. But just keep that in mind. Our turnaround time for garments are usually under a week. And you also want to let you know that Cordova does offer a full line of high vis PPE. You will see that we have the hard hats. This is just two examples of two different styles of glove that are offered in the high vis colors. And we also offer cooling products in the high vis colors. This is a cooling band and we also have the cooling towels. So whatever your needs may be, we have that available for you. Cordova Safety is based out of Memphis, Tennessee. And we also have a warehouse in California. And we are a little bit over 25 years old. We offer a full line of head to toe PPE protection for you. So just let your Tawny Safety um, sales rep know what you need and hopefully we'll be able to help you. Appreciate your time and I hope you enjoy your day. Hello everyone, my name is Tim Guerra. I'm the Miller Fall Protection Specialist for uh, Illinois and Wisconsin. Um, today I'd like to talk about leading edge solutions. What I'd like to talk about is the, tr the chilling truth behind leading edge and fall threats. Um, before we get started in the presentation, I'd like you to just take notice of the gentleman working on the platform. He's connected to one of our Miller Falcon leading edge SRLs. When we talk about leading edge, we're talking about the edge at which the worker is working. And you can see right in the image on the slide that the concrete edge is considered a leading edge. I'm going to get into what does consist of a leading edge. So what's the big deal about leading edges? Right now, leading edges is a hot topic in fall protection. Um, leading edge is defined by ANSI as an unprotected side or edge during periods when it is actively or continuously under construction. And it's any application where a lifeline of the user's connecting device has the potential to come in contact with an edge. So where are edges? We know that they're everywhere on a construction site, maintenance, scaffolding, um, warehouses, and a lot of manufacturing, power generation. So leading edges really are everywhere. And I tell my, my customers that anytime you're not sure if it's a leading edge or not, it probably is and just err on the side of caution. So Honeywell estimates that 80% of all workers 
working at height uh, situations involve an edge or require a level tie off, a foot level tie off. So in the past, we've always had the traditional lanyards and self-retracting lifelines, and these were not definitely not designed to withstand a fall over an edge. So if you look in the two pictures on the slide, these are your traditional web lanyards and webs from a self-retracting lifeline. These obviously went over a leading edge and severed the web. So how do we protect against leading edge dangers? So first and foremost, we need to know where our edges are. And we need to use a leading edge every single time, okay? Anytime that the lifeline has potential to come in contact with an edge or when anchoring at foot level. So one of the most important things um, with leading edge connectors is that the wearer should not be aware of is that every leading edge connecting device has an extra shock absorption, okay? So um, if you're wearing a leading edge, if you think you're wearing a leading edge SRL or a fall limiter, make sure you check to make sure that it has a shock absorber built in. So the shock, shock absorber is gonna reduce the force of the lifeline, okay, once it hits the edge. Um, it keeps the lifeline intact. Um, if we go back to the previous screen, you'll see that as I mentioned, the web lanyards, they did not stay intact once they hit the leading edge. And it reduces the force on the user and it causes it out to a safer limit. And ultimately it's gonna save the user's life. So how can edges be measured? There's different gauges out there in the field that can be used to measure a leading edge. And it's really important to know that a, leading edge or an SRL, like I mentioned earlier, has an integral shock absorber built in. If you look here on the right of the, of the um, screen, we have our Falcon and our turbo edge. And these both, you can see here in the, in the uh, slide, they both come equipped with the integral shock absorber. Okay, so what does Miller have for solutions for leading edge? Our Miller Turbolite Edge series um, is one of our most popular right now. Um, and then we have the Miller Falcon Edge and a Miller Mighty Light. So we'll go over each of these different solutions that we have here. The Turbolite Edge series, when determining what type of edge you have, you're either gonna have a sharp edge or a smooth edge. The Turbolite Extreme, and you'll notice on the SRL or the fall limiter here, it's, it's listed in on the actual equipment is in yellow, highlighted in yellow. And this is designed for sharp edges with a radius of greater than or equal to five one thousandths of an inch, okay? And you'll see that sharp edge there shown in yellow there. Comes with galvanized cable lifeline, and we also offer it on six to nine foot lengths and it meets all the ocean and sea standards as well as Canadian. So we also offer that in a tieback version as well in the eight and 11 foot. So when we're talking about smooth edges, we're talking about our Turbolite Max, okay? Our Turbolite Max is designed for smooth edges with a radius of greater than or, or equal to six hundredths of an inch, okay? And if you notice in the bottom right-hand picture, the smooth edge is in red. So there's a difference between sharp edge, we'll show that in yellow and smooth edge in red. And our lifeline is made with the Honeywell Spectra web material. It comes in lengths of six, nine and 12 feet and also in single and twin configurations. This obviously also meets the ocean ANSI standards. So the Turbolite edge, What's nice about this uh, equipment here is that it's rated for heavier workers. It's rated for workers up to 420 pounds that are connected at foot level or above. It's very versatile offering. Um, it's completely short range edge solution. We, put, we show it in both cable and web. Lightweight, durable. It's 30% lightweight than our competitors in the field right now. With a quicker, easier connection compatible with all Miller harnesses and a better retraction, retraction tension. 
our Falcon Edge self-retracting lifeline. It's designed for sharp edge for a radius of greater than or equal to five thousandths of an inch. And again, you'll see on the worker, it has a integral shock absorber that meets the ANSI requirements. It has a high impact housing uh, to withstand the elements. And it's versatile. It comes in 20, 30, and 50 foot lengths. So what makes our Falcon Edge unique? Again, rated for, for a worker that's 420 pounds or, or um, to, to be used at foot level or above. It's up to 30% lighter than our competitors. And it's designed with a lifetime housing guarantee. Equipped with RFID. And we also have models that come with the Carbon X Flame Retardant Shock Absorber. And these are most, and, the, and these are used for welding applications. So there's an image of the shock pack cover. And then our Mighty Light Leading Edge Self-Retracting Lifeline. This has been a staple for Miller and Honeywell for years. It's our premium line of self-retracting lifelines for leading edge. It's heavy duty and corrosion resistant. Um, the housing is sealed extremely tight on this. So it's gonna be able to withstand the elements. Um, it is lightweight, comes in lengths of 20, 30, 50, and 65 feet. Has a galvanized cable lifeline. And again, the most important thing to recognize when you're purchasing leading edge equipment is the integral shock absorber. Every single piece of leading edge equipment needs to have that integral shock absorber built into it. So, we also offer it in versions with the Kevlar shock absorber for welding applications. So that is the information on the leading edge solutions that we have for your fall protection needs. If you have any questions on any Miller or Honeywell products, please visit the website on the page. Feel free to give me a call off the information off the first page. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Hello, my name is Josh Holmes and I'm with First Aid Only. I'm here today to talk to you about uh, safety on, on, with construction, safety on the construction job site uh, as it relates to First Aid. So let's just jump right in. So obviously everybody's probably familiar with OSHA and ANSI. Uh, OSHA obviously is the law, ANSI sets the requirements, but how does it, how is it uh, played out as it relates to First Aid? So OSHA says that when it comes to First Aid, employers must ensure that first aid supplies are readily available. That's on-site or off-site. So if you've got uh, people working remotely or working out of their uh, uh, trucks or work vehicles, that's their workplace. That, that area they're at, that's their workplace. So they're still going to need to have first aid available to them. It's easy to do it at, at, at the home base, right? Uh, a lot harder to do it remotely, but it's the employer's responsibility to make sure first aid is readily available. Now OSHA doesn't provide spe uh, specifications for the first aid kit content, but what, so what they do, they actually reference ANSI, okay? Now ANSI is the originator of the first aid specifications and minimum content requirements. So back in 2009, they came out with their first minimum requirement for, um, for workplace first aid kit. Then in 2015, it was updated. More likely it's gonna be updated again in 2021 and we'll certainly be ready for it when that happens. Uh, but that gives you a, a quick snapshot uh, of what OSHA and then what ANSI says that relates to first aid. So in 2015, ANSI developed two classes in four types of first aid kits. Not gonna read these verbatim. I know you, you guys are all capable to do that, uh, but you've got two classes, that's class A and class B. Class B, I would think is probably more realistic for job sites because it, it gives that broader range of quantity of supplies to deal with injuries in more complex or high risk environments. And I think we can say that a construction site, a work site, has the potential to be a higher risk environment. Uh, when it comes to the types, uh, obviously you have type one, two, three, and four, uh, and you can uh, look into that. When it comes to uh, communication, you're gonna see that symbol right there, that A plus. 
Uh, what that says, if you look on any of our sell sheets or catalogs, if you see that, you know that that kit or cabinet is meeting ANSI Class A standards plus. So it's going to have additional products in there. Then we put in there what type uh, it meets, type one, two, three, or four, and then how many people uh, can, can effectively work out of that kit. So in this case, it would be 50 person. Uh, when it comes to required contents, this gives you a look at uh, the Class A and Class B, those minimum fill requirements. And when we say minimum fill, this is what, when you fill your, your kit or cabinet up, here's what it needs to be in. That doesn't mean if you get below 51 by three bandages for a Class B that, that your, your kit or your cabinet's out of spec. It's just saying, hey, when you fill it, make sure you fill to that and, and make sure you're, you're keeping an uh, eye on it. Uh, make sure you're, you're refilling it when needed. Um, obviously, you can see in Class B, uh, it's going to have that broader range of products, more products available. Uh, again, here's another way of when we, uh, how we clearly uh, mark first aid only products. You can see how that's laid out, uh, and, and, and make sure that you know uh, uh, when you when you're looking at a kit or cabinet out in the field, you're going to be able to identify that very quickly. So we like to joke when we say, "Where's the beef?" Right? Uh, when it comes to first aid, what to look for, what to ask about. Uh, B, bleeding control kits. Okay, I think that, that's uh, uh, easy to say or easy to understand. If you have a major injury, how are you dealing with that? If you're remote on the job site or, or, or farther out someplace uh, and you have a major injury, how are you dealing with that? All right, we need to, we need to be able to have uh, lay rescuers provide quality, really high quality first response care until medical personnel arrive. Bloodborne pathogen care. Uh, if you have a if, if you do have a situation where there, where there's blood uh, present, we need to make sure we're effectively taking care of that. Emergency uh, first responder bags uh, that really uh, lines up with bleed control kit. Again, we want to make sure we have something. If we have a, a major injury, we're not going to have enough in a, in a standard first aid kit or cabinet to deal with it. So you you're going to need tools to deal with those higher uh, uh, higher impact injuries. Eye wash station. Uh, now, obviously, out on a job site, construction site, you're not going to have uh, oftentimes plumbed uh, for, uh, uh, eye wash station. But what we need to have is, is the ability to deal with an eye injury quickly and effectively. Uh, eye wash bottles are going to give you uh, a, a quick resource and a, and a sterile uh, source to deal with uh, any dirt, debris, metal shards, anything like that that's in your eye. You want to get it out of there. Right? This may not be a chemical situation. But you, you want to have uh, you want to deal with that, that problem immediately and in a very safe way. And then obviously first aid uh, kits and cabinets. Uh, and we'll say it again, Perosha, first aid must be made accessible to all employees in a work environment. So we talked about the different types of standard first aid kits and cabinets. So we're kind of going to go backwards off that where's the beef list, right? We're going to talk about first aid kits and cabinets first. Uh, again, you'll, you'll keep seeing us put up there about what it's what it says, uh, what OSHA says uh, as it relates to first aid, but you're gonna have multiple options that you can have on site out of your truck, so however it is, bulk, unitized, self station, and then smart compliance. Um, got to talk to you about smart compliance because this is really what separates us out, all right? Smart compliance, first aid, that provides compliance, convenience, and cost savings, all right? It tells you, so think on the job site, you have that kind of that main area, right? You have this cabinet up there, where people can work on them. They can come and, and deal with those minor injuries, take care of them, and get back to work. It's going to tell you. It, it, it visually talks to you, right? When you open that cabinet up, it tells you through these smart tabs if you're getting low on a particular product, okay? So that allows whoever's managing that first aid cabinet to manage it really quickly and easily, all right? And, and work through um, county safety to, to deliver those, uh, those replenishment uh, supplies to you, okay? Um, our, we have a safety hub app, smart compliance safety hub app, uh, that allows that person who's managing that first aid cabinet to scan that barcode that's either on the box itself or the smart tab, okay, and create and build requisitions, right, that they would then send uh, to Connie Safety uh, for uh, orders, okay? So it's a very easy way to manage remotely. Wherever you are, you can use you can you can use that that scanning tool, uh, and that can be used with or without um, a, a connection. So e even if you're somewhere where you, your phone doesn't work, you can still utilize the app. And then when you get back to where uh, you know Wi-Fi works or whatnot, you're able to send that off to Connie, 
uh, to get that reorder um, uh, in place. Uh, so really a great tool to help manage your first aid uh, wherever you are. Uh, advantages, um, cost savings, okay? If you've been trying to have a van service manager and maybe trying to be managing yourself, this is a really easy way to do it, all right? From a time saving standpoint, it's significant. Um, eliminates overstuffed cabinets. You have in there what you need all the time. Reduces pilfers, all right? Those individual boxes are, are, are secure, securely fit in there. Uh, so you're not gonna be able to just take a box and, and go. So really a great way to go about it. Uh, and we have multiple options, uh, size options available. Uh, when it comes to our class B options, those are gonna be our double XL, or our XL and our double XL uh, smart compliance cap. Uh, we're gonna shoot back to this when we're talking about bleeding control and first responder. I know we touched on it earlier. Uh, certainly don't wanna, uh, I certainly want to touch on it again, all right, because it's that important. If you have a major wound, all right, how are you dealing with it? All right, our bleeding control gifts give multiple options, options to, to, uh, that you can apply directly to the wound itself or uh, tourniquet options to go above the wound, all right, if you have a major bleeding scenario. I think we all know this, uh, and if you don't, um, here's, a, here's something to know. Uh, Every second, every second, every seven seconds, a worker is injured on the job, right? 60,000 Americans die from hemorrhaging or blood loss per year. A, a grown adult can die in three to five minutes from blood loss if we're not dealing with it quickly. Uh, so we want to make sure we have the right tools, especially on job sites, especially with remote works being done. So if you have a major issue, you can deal with it effectively. And then certainly first responder products, we talked about that, that grab and go bag. It's going to be able to deal with those higher uh, impact injuries. Bloodborne pathogen, um, getting a little bit more granular here. You know, this speaks to what OSHA says around bloodborne pathogen. If you don't have the right tools, the right products, uh, uh, the right way to dispose of it, it's not going to be, I can promise you, the blood's going to be cleaned up. But it's not going to be cleaned up properly. Let's just make sure we have the right tools in place to deal with those issues immediately. Emergency eye wash and wound wash stations, we talked about this earlier, right? Um, these are, these are handheld solutions, all right? In a, um, in a, in a, th these are considered secondary eyewash uh, solutions. They're not primary because they're not plumbed. Uh, but this allows you, it's a handheld situation, allows you to deal with uh, issues that could arise uh, out on the job site. When you get something in your eye, make sure you're getting it out, getting it out clearly. We want, we want that sterile solution. And with that, uh, we're going to be, we're going to be finished up. Um, thank you for the time today. I hope you, uh, found it uh, enlightening, uh, maybe a little entertaining, uh, and we certainly appreciate you joining us. Have a great day. Hi, my name is Dennis Capizzi. I'm the Industrial Marketing Manager for Head, Eye, Face, and Hearing here at MSA. Today, we're going to go over the line of MSA head protection that we have to offer and how you can sort through and decide which helmet best fits your application needs. So when you look at the, the many line of helmet, or excuse me, the large line of helmets that MSA has, there's a number of questions you want to ask yourself to really hone in on which helmet best fits your application. You're going to start with your hazards and applications. Obviously, what are you doing? Are you working at heights? Do you have chemical splash dangers in front of you? Extreme weather conditions, is it hot, cold? Uh, are you going to interact with any electrical impact risks? Do you need side impact protection like a type two helmet? We're going to focus on type one helmets today, but we do offer a type two. It's our Super V. Uh, type two helmet provides lateral protection, so protection in the front, sides, and back. Uh, but for the most part, the bread and butter of a lot of the construction industry is focused on type one helmets. And as such, I'm gonna focus this presentation on that as well. The class styles is your next uh, question you wanna ask. Are you gonna need class E, an electrical class, or can you deal with class C because you're not going into an electrical rated uh, application? And that brings in things like venting that you can have as an option. Do you need a cap? a hat, brimless style, uh, and then you get into standards compliance. Do you need ANSI, CSA, which is the Canadian version, uh, EN, which is European, or other 
other standards that might be out there. If you're a global company, some companies require uh, all standards to be met. So understanding those standards is a big one. Then what accessories might you need to attach to that helmet to fully protect yourself or uh, pr provide additional protection against your application? If you're welding, uh, do you need face protection? Would you need a chin strap? Uh, hearing protection, et cetera, understanding those additional accessories and how they properly incorporate to the helmet to provide that full solution protection. And then some other considerations you might want to take into uh, account are third-party certification. So if you look at ANSI uh, and CSA for that matter, they don't require third-party certification, meaning that all of the helmets can be tested and approved by the manufacturer. Where MSA, we use a, a company called SEI for third-party certification that we send all of our helmets out to to be tested against the standard to confirm that they do meet those standard requirements. So that adds another level of confidence, knowing that it's not just MSA providing that uh, assurance, but it's a, a third-party independent testing agency that, that proves we meet those standard requirements. And then you want to look into customization. What do you want logos, personalization, striping, different colors? Do you have risk for heat exhaustion or heat stress? Do you want venting to be included? So those other little nuances within the line might help to uh, benefit your workers in the application that they are facing. So once you have that outlined on what uh, applications you're facing, what uh, dangers might be in that application, what additional protections you might need, then you could enter into the types of helmets that we have and properly select that helmet. Starting with the V-Guard, that is MSA's number one hard hat sold globally. Uh, and what makes it so popular are comfort, quality, delivery options. And when you look at the comfort, that the foundation starts with the Fast Track 3. Uh, in the past several years, we redeveloped the suspension of the helmet, uh, came out with the Fast Track 3. When it's put up against competitive suspensions in the market uh, through blind studies, it's chosen 92% of the time. Quality, we use 100% virgin HDPE material to ensure consistent uh, performance across the shell. We lot test 100% of the helmets coming off of the line. Uh, to ensure that it not only meets the standard requirements, but MSA stringent requirements as well. If you look at our delivery, uh, most of the helmets that we have on our line that are part numbered are available today off of our DC, and we have them on our shelves ready to ship out same day. Uh, when you look at a logoed helmet, from the time that you're thinking about putting a logo on a helmet to we reach out and let you know that helmet is being delivered, uh, can be from five to seven days. Now there's approvals and things like that that go into, uh, that you have to take into account, but from, I'm thinking about putting it on a helmet to the helmets are being delivered to me in five days, nobody can beat that. Options, uh, so starting with color alone, we have probably a hundred different colors at our disposal at any time to mold the shell to. Another benefit is we can mold a shell to any color under the sun. So as, as long as you have the PMS color uh, with a minimum order quantity, we can mold a shell to match that PMS color. Uh, then you can look into sizing. So when you look at the, the V-Guard cap, we have three different sizes of Fast Track 3 suspension, but we also have three different sizes of shell. Not any, nobody else has that where they match the suspension size to the shell. And what that allows for is you can imagine if you're, you're a smaller frame, uh, having a, a smaller shell to accompany that suspension helps with balance and, and comfort where some of the competitive units out there where it's just the different sizes of suspension, but they maintain the same size shell, it might feel a little unbalanced and not have the the highest level of comfort possible. So with all of that, that makes the V-Guard the, the number one hard hat uh, that we sell globally. But then there's other variations to that V-Guard. For instance, the V-Guard Green. 
Uh, we are the first manufacturer to offer a hard hat that the base HDP material is manufactured using a renewable resource, in this case, sugarcane. If you're a LEED certified builder or an EHS professional, uh, this might be a helmet that you're looking into to really showcase uh, you know, that your company is environmentally conscious and utilizing these helmets across your workforce would definitely add another layer to that process. The V-Guard 500, I often say that MSA doesn't really come up with the ideas for our helmets. It's found through voice of customer and you know, customers blatantly reaching out to us, telling us what they need. Uh, the V-Guard 500 is a perfect example of that where a, a customer showed us you know, heat stress and the impacts of that and wanted to have a vented version of our V-Guard. So we worked with that customer and came up with the V-Guard 500. Now this comes in both a vented and a non-vented option. So if you have a site where some of your employees do require Class E certification, which would not allow for venting, uh, you can utilize this helmet and maintain the same look across your site by having some vented and some not. Having that vented opens up the, the shell a little bit and allows for airflow to reduce that heat stress, helps a little bit with uh, hygiene and making the user a little more comfortable. It also has a rain trough that's built around it, so it helps to direct the, any rain or, or moisture coming down from above to the front of the helmet so you don't have it pouring down the back of your neck. Next, we move to the smooth dome. So very similar when it comes to the performance of the helmet uh, when you compare it to the V-Guard, but the smooth dome has a smooth crown. Uh, and this is more of an, an aesthetic thing where folks who, who like that look will gravitate towards this helmet. A lot of folks use this in confined space. This helmet is a little uh, less expensive than the V-Guard. So if you're cost conscious or looking to cut budgets a little bit here, our, you can save some money using the smooth dome. Again, it has a smooth crown. Uh, it has slots, which allow it to quickly incorporate the accessories. Moving on to the top guard, this one is famous for its single brim that goes down the center of the helmet. Uh, this is big in the utilities market. It has a slightly higher heat rating. So if you look at the V-Guard, V-Guard Green, uh, V-Guard 500, they're going to have the higher temp rating for ANSI, which is 140 degrees Fahrenheit, where the smooth dome allows that to go up, or excuse me, where the top guard allows that to go up to 275 degrees Fahrenheit. This is somewhat as a status symbol for the utilities, and it's also very big in Canada. Moving to the skull guard, I had mentioned the higher heat protection for the top guard. The skull guard follows that same path. However, it takes it up to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a big helmet in the construction world as well as in the iron workers world. If you look at this helmet, every single one of them is handmade. So they're like thumbprints. Every, every one is different in, in the smallest way. You'll never find one identical. The other part of this is it's used, it's made using a phenolic material, which when it interacts with the UV rays of the sun, when you're working with it outside over time, it changes color from a, a light tan to a dark molasses color. Uh, it makes it somewhat again as a status symbol as it changes to that dark molasses color, it represents tenure. So the, the folks wearing that dark molasses colored helmet often don't wanna give it up because it's, it's difficult for them to put on a light tan helmet and feel like they look like a newbie again. Um, and that's somewhat okay. So the skull guard is a higher ticket item. Uh, it, it only lists for around $100, but what the skull guard brings with it is the replacement cycle. Every other helmet MSA manufactures, it has a five-year replacement cycle for the shell and an annual replacement cycle for the suspension. While the skull guard carries that same annual replacement cycle for the suspension, the shell itself, as long as it passes daily post and pre-use inspections, it can maintain, you can continue to use it beyond that five years. Now, I'm not saying 20, 30 years, but 10 years isn't out of the question. So if you look at replacement costs for some of the competitive units uh, that 
might need to be replaced every two or three years, adding that up to the replacement cost of the skull guard over time, you might actually save money. So that's one you want to look into if you're, uh, if you're looking for something a little different. Thermal guard comes to the same 350 degree Fahrenheit protection level as the skull guard. However, it's not going to come with the price tag. This is a molded helmet, so it's uh, similar to the, the V guard when it comes to how this helmet is manufactured, uh, but it uses a, a different material, obviously. It does have a smooth crown, very similar to the smooth dome, uh, and it's popular in higher heat applications, uh, steel industries, welders, et cetera. Um, works well with, with welding shields, and it, it's just been a, a very popular helmet in that world. Compo cap is strictly for mining. It has a slightly lower profile. Uh, it was manufactured for that application. And many of them come with a lamp bracket and cord holder pre-installed for that application. If, if you're not going into the mining world, the Compo cap is, is most likely not for you. Uh, but if you are, it's a helmet that was specifically designed for you. Then there's the H1 safety helmet. This is the, the newest helmet in our line here. It was launched uh, in 2019. And it has a different look. It's a, a climbing style helmet. It looks like a climbing style helmet. However, we started from the ground up. So we didn't start with a, a recreational climbing helmet and adapt it to meet the industrials, industrial world's needs or the construction world's needs. We went out to the construction industry and we asked, what do you need for your confined space applications? What do you need when you're working at heights? How would we create a helmet that best fits those needs and to ensure comfort is second to none when, it, when we look at this helmet? So we took all of that feedback and came back with the H1 safety helmet. Again, working at heights, confined space, Rescue, if you don't need NFPA ratings, this is, this is a perfect helmet for that as well. It's a brimless design, so it opens up your field of view a little bit more. Uh, it's, it has a four-point chin strap standard. The Fast Track 3 suspension in this helmet, we adapted to have pivot points in it. So there's a pivot point in the center, and there's a pivot point at the nape strap. The pivot point in the center lets you find the base of the skull quickly and secure it in place with the ratchet. The pivot points at the nape strap fit the need of the workers at heights and confined space. So when you're crawling or when you're climbing and you have to look up, a, where a static suspension might limit that range of motion, the pivot points allow for that suspension to float with you. Uh, it makes it a lot more comfortable and provides us a slightly larger range of motion. Has non-contact foam liner, where some of the competitive units in the market today, they, the foam liner is the suspension and it sits right on the top of the head. Uh, vented or not, that will most likely hold some heat where so separating the top of the user's head from that foam allows for airflow. Uh, this comes in a vented option as well. So if you don't need class E rating, the vents will help to increase that airflow even more. Again, aiding with heat stress and uh, comfort. Simple to use adjustments. So that was the other thing we wanted to really focus on with the H1 is simplicity. Uh, all of the adjustments when it comes to the chin strap, the accessories and so on are really simple. Um, we, we use cams a lot for uh, quickly opening and closing to make the adjustments on the chin straps. We have push button accessories. So to slide them in and out of the accessory rail, super simple. Uh, so lots and lots of design work went into the H1 safety helmet to specifically meet the needs of those working at heights, confined space in the construction world and rescue. Um, so that was a big one for us. So as you can see, there, there are a number of type one helmets that MSA offers. And based on your answers to these questions, you're able to really understand which helmet here might best fit your needs. Yes, the V-Guard is going to meet your needs most of the time. However, if you look through this list, there might be something based on those original questions that better fits your, or suits your needs. So I just wanted to, to provide you with this training 
to give you a good understanding of everything that we have out there so that when you are making the decision on which path to take when it comes to your head protection, you, you have a good understanding of where MSA sits and what we have available that helps meet your needs. And with that, I thank you for your time today. And if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to check out our website or reach out to MSA. Happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you again and have a great day. Good morning, this is Eric Royson with PIP. Thank you for your participation today. We're gonna to start our uh, review process on the building and construction industry on cut resistant glove and eyewear. Let's go ahead and start the uh, bring best to you video here. Our passion for innovation, developing safety products and servicing our customer is really what drives our product management team. Our product management team is constantly thinking of safety for the end user. We're bringing innovation and safety in new ways, so I can confidently say that we're bringing the best in product innovation to you. As you can see by some of the slides, the construction focus is on abrasion, wet and dry, and impact and as well as cut levels. We do have cut levels from A1 to A9, and we also have a number of coatings. We have nitrile, polyurethane, PVC, neofoam, latex, and silicone as well. Uh, we highlighted some of our top movers uh, in this industry. Um, the GTEC GP glove is a fantastic glove for modern, moderate impact protection. And then down below that, you'll see our goatskin driver glove, which is a fantastic glove for oil and water resistance, high abrasion, and it does have great dexterity. And then on the outer structure end of the business, the same thing, abrasion, wet and dry, and impact resistant. We have our GTEx Polycore glove listed there. It's uh, fantastic for uh, wet and dry grip as well. Great abrasion resistant and good comfortable and very breathable, A3 on that one. Um, if you'll notice on the bottom there, the uh, sheepskin driver glove, cut, cut resistant, A4, excellent dexterity and durability. Um, it's great for heavy duty impact protection and the comfort level on this glove is very high as well. And we'll move to the electrical end. The electrical needs are a little bit different. Um, you know, they're still cut resistant, dry grip and impact. Um, that uh, Maxi Cut Ultra A3, fantastic breathability on that glove, great grip with dry and light oil, excellent dexterity on that as well. We've got the GTEx Polycore with the impact resistance. It has heavy duty impact resistance protection on that. And then we have the Cowhide Driver. Um, again, it uh, has fantastic dexterity and durability on this glove as well as impact protection. And we're gonna to go to the interior finishing, much the same cut resistant dry grip, but the biggest factor in this end is the dexterity. We feel our ATG line is the most comfortable fit in the market. Um, these gloves come out of the package very clean as well, so there's no odor like you find in some of the, some of the gloves when they open them up. Um, you look at the GTEC, uh, Crinkle latex palm, very popular glove, good dexterity. Um, we have the polycore uh, with the neofoam as well. Um, and then we have our maxi cut, ultra cut, which is one of our top selling gloves in the, pretty much in the industry across the board. All three of these have great wearability. Now we're gonna move on to cold weather gloves. Obviously the, some of the key factors there is warmth, grip, and flexibility as well. Uh, we've got our power grab in there on two different uh, versions. Fantastic gloves, um, very flexible in the cold weather, very flexible. Keeps your hands dry as well. And then we have the polycore gloves on the other side, uh, A3 and A5 on that. Uh, quick evaporation from the skin on some of these gloves as well. 
very good uh, in the uh, wet and oily applications. Let's go ahead and start the ATG MaxiFlex video. These are the MaxiFlex cut gloves from PIP. MaxiFlex gloves are already incredibly popular because of their ultra-thin, seamless construction. It's basically the closest you can get to working with your bare hands. And finally, the MaxiFlex are available with a high cut resistance. In a moment, we'll do a quick demonstration of the gloves' cut protection performance. These gloves still have everything people like about the MaxiFlex line. They're thin, flexible, dexterous, and comfortable. The nitrile coating is 360 degree breathable and the design of the glove offers great form, fit, and feel. It has a reinforced wear pad, which improves cut resistance and extends the glove life. The gloves are available in sizes extra small to triple XL, and can be bought as pairs or in cases of 12. These gloves have an EN388 rating of four for abrasion, three for cut, three for tear, and one for puncture. Obviously, the super thin design isn't ideal for puncture protection, so if that's what you're looking for, these aren't for you. Here I have three different gloves, a standard split leather driver, a standard MaxiFlex Elite, and the MaxiFlex Cut. I'll use a tennis ball to represent the hand inside the glove. This is a pretty basic test and certainly doesn't represent the type of official testing that these gloves go through to get their ratings. It's just a quick demo to give you an idea of how each would perform if a knife slipped while you were using them. First up, the leather driver. Obviously it cuts pretty easily. If you think about it, all leather is, is treated skin. It might shield you a little bit, but there's not much cut protection here. Next up is the MaxiFlex Elite. With a cut rating of one, these do a bit better than the leather gloves, but still don't provide much protection. It's still better than nothing, but not by much. And last is the MaxiFlex Cut. The cut level three gloves perform well here. Even after running the knife over the same spot repeatedly, the glove keeps you protected. So there you have it, the MaxiFlex Cut from PIP. Now we'll talk about the uh, Bhutan uh, eyewear. We have a wide range of the eyewear as far as glasses, goggles, and face shields. Uh, here we have listed um, you know, four of our top selling glasses in the construction field. Uh, we do have many other options available as well, but these are our top or sellers in the marketplace. Um, and I want to touch on the Fogless 360, and we're gonna start the Fogless 360 video, and then we'll get into it a little more after that. So as you saw in there, um, very unique product. Our Fogus 360, the material is embedded into the lens. It is not sprayed on or wiped on, if you will, afterwards. It's uh, bonded and very, very dur durable and uh, holds up well against cleaning and water and uh, all kinds of extreme work environments. This is by far our fastest, grow, fastest growing product in the eyewear section. With today's climate, with people wearing face masks uh, on a regular basis, as well as eyewear and face shields as well, um, this will take care of the problem that a lot of people are complaining about right now. When I put my mask on, my glasses are fogging up on me. If you try these Fogus 360s, I think you'll be very happy with them. Again, we've listed the four top sellers in this construction field on this. Feel free to ask for samples on this. These are great products. Uh, you should have a pair for yourself to try as well. So I just want to do a quick little recap here. You know, we do have a wide range of products uh, in the cut resistant areas, like again, A1 to A9, number of different coatings as well. Uh, all of this is on our construction in our construction catalog online you know, please check it out a number of videos on there as well that probably would help you out in some of these areas all of this is easy easily downloadable 
Um, and again, right from that website, uh, when you're looking at these, you can order samples directly from there. And let us know if there's anything we can do on our end to help you out. I would appreciate it. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you to those vendors for the time and information you shared. That was really helpful. The last thing I wanna say before ending this is that while we, we really don't have time to answer any questions live here on the webinar, we still wanted to keep sending them in. I see we got a few questions already have, that have been coming in uh, and we'll make sure to get them answered to you. We'll send them in a separate email. So thanks again for joining us and have a great rest of the day.